Hi. What is going on, everybody? Today we're going to be opening up a Wilds of Eldraine bundle. Now, bundles are my favorite product to open because you get um, a really beautiful box. You get the oversized spin-down life counters, uh, which are my favorite thing to use. And then you get uh, set booster packs instead of set draft boosters or draft boosters. It's you get set boosters instead of draft boosters, which are far more fun to open. Now, the interesting thing about Wilds of Eldraine is that, again, we are getting a an extra sheet. So there's a sheet of old cards uh, that are being reprinted in Wilds of Eldraine art for this set. And as much as I love the idea of getting access to some of these old cards what it really does is it kind of makes all of the chase cards in products like this uh cards that aren't even from this set so it feels good on one hand and it feels weird on another where you know opening this i'm excited to open eldraine cards but i'm financially more excited to open old cards that aren't part of this set um, the key art is of Ariette, one of the three witch sisters. And then there's some beautiful, um, like haunted woods, fairy vibes around the edges. The purple is like the perfect purple color. And yeah, I love the font treatment as a design nerd. I love the font they chose for the wilds and how they changed the typical Balearan font for most magic products into something that uh, looks a little bit more fairy tale like for the Eldraine portion. I think I think it adds like a nice flavor to it. Also, the set symbol um, is this like gorgeous kind of crystallized Planeswalker logo, which I believe is like reminiscent of Ariette's apple which which is really cool and then yeah the back of the box says a tale only you can tell venture into the wilds of eldraine and free the kingdom from a curse of endless slumber cast powerful enchantments from magic's history with an enchanting tales card in every pack so we're getting one of the reprint cards we're getting one in every pack uh, by using a variety of role tokens, you can even change up the game and write your own story. Will you bring? Will you be a young hero or wicked, royal or cursed? In the wilds, destiny is a dream come true. And so we get 20 foil and 20 regular basic lands. We get um, a special treatment, which is Lich Knight's Conquest. Uh, actually one of the most powerful cards in this whole set, so I'm very excited about that. We get 12 uh, set boosters, and then we get some instruction reference cards. We get an oversized spin down life counter, which I haven't seen this die in person yet. I'm very excited for that. And then obviously we get the card box. Um, yeah, let's crack this bad boy open. So they've got these nice little pull tabs on the side. Um, recently, actually, I was just looking, I have all my bundle boxes up on a shelf above my desk and somewhere around the time of Kamigawa I think Kamigawa is the oldest one I have up there Kamigawa was the first bundle to have the redesigned packaging so it's a lot shorter the older ones used to be about this tall and they would have like a filler box in the bottom and that made them a little awkward these ones are the perfect size um, there's no filler box. It just comes with the contents, nothing extra. What is this? Know your role. Oh, is this supposed to be like the, oh, for some reason the, the, um, the art piece that was supposed to be like in the front of this got squished into the side. So it's all effed up now. Um, but that's cute. And then on the back, it's like, know your role. 
There's six rolls total in the Wilds of Eldraine. So this is kind of just a cute little reference card so that you can figure out what the rolls do. I like that quite a bit. And then we slide the whole thing out and this is just empty in there. So we can throw that aside. So yeah, what I usually do for display purposes is I just tape this back up and put the empty box up on my shelf somewhere. And I like it. It looks nice. Uh, the box art is gorgeous. It's got the Planeswalker logo on the one side. Actually, both sides. Then it's got Wilds of Eldraine on the top and the Ariet key art on either side there. So then you open this bad boy up. And you've got a nice little storage box. So we're going to keep this to the side so that we can stack some garbage in there. Now, here's one thing that I'd love for them to make a better use of, I think, is these cards come with a bunch of punch out uh, tokens. So here we've got some plus one plus ones. On the other side, it looks like we've got a wicked or a cursed. Oh no, these are stun counters, I think. And then all of these guys are kind of like just for show and tell. You can use them for, I guess, whatever your play group designates them for. I find them extremely useless. The, the tokens aren't bad. I have a drawer full of the cardboard tokens that if we need them, we can use them. Um, otherwise, this stuff isn't... I really like how they've been using packaging, not wasting any of the space. I super agree with that, yeah. So, like I was saying earlier, they've changed the shape of the bundle around Kamigawa Neon Dynasty was like the first time they kind of shrunk it down to get rid of some of that waste. Um, I would just like to see them utilize this more, this folding. So basically they invented this thing so that you can put it in the box and keep all the cards safe. So it kind of adds an extra layer of protection on top of the cardboard box itself. And that's really useful because the last thing you want is someone to pay money to buy a box of cards and have them all ruined. Once you take the cards out of the pack and they sit a little bit more flush in the box, it closes nicely. But they still have to have this little lip in here to hug the edge of the box. Otherwise, it'll just put pressure on the top of the cards and we don't want that at all. So they designed this to kind of keep it and let it ship a lot nicer. And obviously they've taken advantage of it with these tokens, but I'd like to see them use up all this other space for, for similar tokens even. Like, why don't I have uh, roll tokens or an adventure placemat? These placemats are, are kind of nice because they're about the same size as a card, a little bit bigger. Um, don't mind my... Lurgoif. It's just the closest card to me right now. Um, so it'd be cool if we got like an adventure one. These are actually really handy if you write on the back of them. If you play a lot on like spell table with uh, this overhead camera. Having something like your library or your graveyard just designated. You could just write on this. So it's a lot easier to see. So yeah, it, it, it kind of surprises me that they didn't give us an adventure token or anything like that i would just like to see them use this a little bit better is all the the standard circle tokens are are fine i think i don't mind them but the rest of them are kind of just like for looks you know i'm just gonna put this over here i'm kind of sad this got munched up somehow this wound up in the front end of our bundle box and not along the side where it's supposed to keep be kept safe um yeah sometimes i like to frame these if they're really cool art there was like a junji ito elish norn on the back of the phyrexia all will be one bundle and i like that one quite a bit that art is obviously 
amazing. So inside here, we've got a separator, which is really handy. Um, I build all of my decks pretty much in these. I've got just so many of them kicking around, filled with cards that are designated for certain decks, or I'm just trying to keep aside. Um, and they slot nicely inside the larger card box. So if you want to separate things inside a full box, that's cool too. So let's take a look at the die. Oh, that's really cool. It's this like grapey jelly kind of purple pink color. Hold on, let me see if I can. It's like super gorgeous. Um, that might be too bright. Let me see if I can turn that down a bit. Oh, that's as low as it'll go. Yeah, that's going to be too bright. I'm just trying to get give you a sense of this. It looks like jello almost. And it's this like gorgeous pinky color. Uh, it's really nice. Goes really well with this play mat. Um, I don't know how well you can see that. Not very well at all, I guess. All right. Well, experiment ruined. It's really cool looking. I think that might be my new favorite spin down. That thing's cool. The one on the back of the box looked... Oh, I guess it's like sort of similar. It's hard because sometimes they put a life counter die on the back of the box that they intended to make and then they never made it or they changed their mind at some point. Um, so sometimes you don't wind up with the advertised product, which is okay. Things happen. It's not that big of a, a change, you know? If it was a huge change, I'd be a little upset, but it's like you get a green tinted thing instead of a blue tinted thing. So these packs here in the paper, which is again, another choice that Wizards has made to kind of um, curb the amount of waste that they have. These are biodegradable paper packaging, something that they've been experimenting with. Um, for their actual booster packs, but have not figured out a way to do well. I know other TCGs have moved to similar things where they're trying to just curb the waste uh, of these products. And so this is going to be two of every basic land. Um, they gave us two different stock arts for each basic. So we get four of each in this pack. They're really nice. Um, but again, and then we've got two of the little guide cards. These are really handy to have around, especially if you're playing uh, with new people or you have like, I have a box set that's basically a bunch of really low power decks. And I have a bunch of these inside that box set because that's the box I use when I'm playing with someone that's fairly new. I also keep a bunch of these next to our gaming table here, which is behind me. Um, that way, if anyone comes over and doesn't know or hasn't played in a while, just wants a friendly reminder, you just keep this on the side of your play mat and you'd be like, OK, it's my turn. What do I do? I begin, I main phase, combat, main phase, end. This one um, is a little less useful because you know, casting spells and tapping, it's its easier to kind of explain this in uh, verbally and with the physical cards. Whereas this is just a nice reminder of what you have available to you on your turn. So these are good. I like the inclusion of them always. Uh, the lands are great. Wizards did that thing again where they made extremely brilliant full art lands. Every single time a new set drops, everyone's like, these are my new favorite full art lands. And they did it again. 
So as much as the art on the basic lands is gorgeous, it's not as exciting as the new full art lands. And then here we've got our special bundle art version of Lich Knight's Conquest, which is one of the most powerful cards in the whole set. It's pretty cool. I just noticed that my hand holding the card is in my cam. But I guess it's fine. It just shows you that I'm holding a card. It's not blocking my face or anything. This art is really cool. Uh, this was done by Christina Carroll. So this is an exclusive to the bundle. It's the only way to get it. This foil, this art. Um, the, the original Lich Knight's Conquest art is really strong, but uh, that's pretty good too. And then here we've got two foil versions of each of the basic lands. So same thing as the last pack. These ones are just in foil. So that's pretty cool. Um, some of the foils popping these black, these swamps, the little purple candles, they pop really nicely. So I'm not a huge fan of like foil basic lands like this. Uh, but I am a huge fan of the way some artists and the printing designers kind of utilize this. Also, I just had a huge wash of deja vu. Um, I need, whoa. Okay. Um, yeah. One of the nice, interesting things that people don't talk about very often is when an artist submits their art for something, a designer, a card designer, like visual designer, has to figure out what to foil and how to foil it so that it makes the most out of the art. So there's a whole nother step in the process of creating foil cards that people don't often consider. Uh, I'm going to leave Lich Knight's Conquest out because I think that that is going to... I mean, it goes with the rest of the cards, so obviously I should leave it out. Let me just grab some soft sleeves. Are these all, all bent? No, just this one. So I can foil up our rares. Foil up. So I can sleeve up our rares. Now, what I normally like to do, because we're not building out of this um, pack, is I'll just stack things kind of on top of one another instead of fanning them out like I would if we were building a pre-release kit or something, which I don't have an extra one yet, but I might be able to get my hands on one so we can do a pre-release, a limited video. Now, um, I'm just noticing kind of how dull this camera looks. Is that going to be a problem? Can I try to fix that? Let me see if I can fix it quickly. And if not, uh, one sec. Trying to get it to like an organic spot, but it's like auto adjusting. That's not too bad. Uh, maybe I'll just turn the auto white balance off.
That is my flesh. Okay, now the filter in. Well, that's quite a bit better, I think. Yeah, that looks all right. Okay. That looks a bit better. Um, so we have, how many of these do we have? Eight of them? We have eight set boosters to open. And again, what we're kind of looking for value wise is all of the cards on the extra sheet. So we'll, we'll keep our eyes out for those as we go through these. Uh, let's open pack number one. That opened really nicely. We got some beautiful anime art, which is great. Um, I did not check to see which order these set boosters are in. So, okay. It's normal order. Uh, so we have Moment of Valor, which is good. We have Toadstool Admirer. Evolving Wilds, love it. Cursed Courtier, Taken by Nightmares, Eerie Interference, Ooh, Asinine Antics, it's a mythic, and then our list, or our, um, sorry, what are they called? Enchanting Tale card is Curiosity. Pretty cool. Oh, we got two. Defense of the Heart. That's pretty cool. Oh my god, we got three. Bitter Blossom. That's huge. Big win there. Dang. And then we got a Foil Storm Keld Vanguard. And a cool fairy token. Look at that. On the back. Hot new reprints. Hot singles in your area. Um, okay, that's awesome. I'm going to put that Bitter Blossom in something a little bit harder. Sweet. Big win there. And we got three pieces from... Actually, let me pull up the buy list for this set. So I can make sure that we are... Taking care of the cards we need to take care of. So the enchanted price list goes as follows. Um... Outside of foils, it's doubling season, Ristic study, smothering tide. The other version of doubling season, Ristic study. Uh, bitter blossom is thirty. Oh wait, that's a different version of bitter blossom. Fifteen dollars and twenty cents. So not great, but not bad. And then. Defense of the Heart is all the way down at $7, so not stellar. So the ones we're looking out for is the full art with the anime style. Oh, when KK comes in? Um, so like Doubling Season, Ristic Study, Smothering Tide, Tithe, Necropotence. Parallel Lives, um, all in the anime art style, which we didn't open any anime art styles 
from those cards. No red in that pack. Are we, we're not going to get three um, Enchanted Tales in every pack, are we? All right, pack number two. We got an Ice Crown art. Cool. Ooh, okay, here's the new full art lands. They're actually photographs of um, parallax pieces of art, paper art that the artist actually made. Uh, super stunning. I love those so much. We've got Harried Spear Guard, Rat Out, Voracious Vermin, Edgewall Pack, Doggo, Welcome to Sweet Tooth. Back for seconds. Great, I need those. Knight of Sweets Revenge. Tough Cookie. For our rare is Sleep Cursed Fairy. We got another Curiosity. A Foil Grasp of Fate. That's gorgeous. And that is it. And we got a Stupid Rules card. Stupid rules. Not even a token. Um, wow, Grasp of Fate is 50 cents. A dollar for the foil. I don't think there's anything giant in the normal wilds of eldraine set 60 bucks for besiege the mirror actually even the normal version of besiege the mirror is 34 dollars so besiege the mirror moonshaker cavalry and agatha's soul cauldron are the big gets there uh, but we'll keep our page looking at the Enchanted Tales set, because those are the chase cards for sure. All right, pack number three. I don't know why I shook it like a Polaroid picture. Now I'm going to have that Outcast song stuck in my head. We've got a, what is this card called again? Brave the Wilds art. Super beautiful. Got a foil forest. Another moment of valor. Another toadstool admirer. Another evolving wilds. Okay, we broke the streak. Threadbind click. Picklock prankster. This is a great card. Ooh, Chancellor of Tales. Also a great card. Ego drain. Ooh, restless fortress. Full extended art. Our rare is Song of Totentans. And we get Vampiric Rite. And Knight of Sweets Revenge in Foil. And an Adventure Token. Nice. Um, and I don't believe that that Vampiric Rites is anything to write home about. It's a good card, but... All right, pack number four. It's looking pretty good so far. That pack was a lot of good fairies. And the Restless Fortress is very good too. Oh, you can't see those, can you? Oh, we got a card back. You know what that means. It's either going to be a list card or we're going to get faked out. Sometimes they put normal card backs on blank cards and it fakes me out every time. All right. So we have a beautiful, um, what is this card called? Tegwill. Is that from the commander set? The art in that is just so, I love this like weird gothic fairy thing uh we got a forest troublemaker oof grabby giant red cap thief archon's glory 
Oh, a gingerbread hunter. This guy's cool. Three bowls of porridge. My favorite of the flavor wins in this set. Discerning financier. Rowdy research. Heart flame duelist is our rare. Great card. We got a forced fruition as our enchanted tail and a foil evolving wilds. Nice. Oh, there we go. Miri the Cursed is our list card. Two black black for a 3-2 with flying first strike and haste. When Miri the Cursed deals combat damage to a creature, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. That's cool. I believe that set symbol is Time Spiral. Very neat. Uh, looking pretty good. I love the I love the art on this forced fruition. Very cool. All right, pack number five. Pack number five. Let's go close. We got an Agatha's Cauldron art. Probably not going to pull as much dollars as the card itself. We got an island. Rosslyn Island. Wicked Visitor. Warehouse Tabby. Gnawing Crescendo. Earth Elemental. Johan Apprentice Sorcerer. That's cool. Splashy Spellcaster. Gadwick's first duel, and our rare is a Gumdrop Poisoner. Good card. Very good card. Uh, Oversold Cemetery is our Enchanted Tale. It's pretty cool. Uh, Stab Wound. We got two uh, Enchanted Tales. Stab Wound. Uh, that's pretty neat. Let me get a Foil Fairy Fencing, which is a great... Uh, card in the fairies deck that's pretty cool I like that we got two enchanting tails there that's pretty neat so far bitter blossom is our best bet not bad I need some coffee All right, pack number six. Oh, this one was hard to open. Okay, okay. Let's go close. Bring it in. Beautiful art there. That's from the Frantic Firebolt card. We got Basic Mountain, Verdant Outrider, Fell Horseman. Pretty cool card, actually. Uh, Savior of the Sleeping, Slumbering Keep Guard, another back for seconds, great. A Knight of Sweets Revenge, another Ginger Brute, cool card. Ooh, a Greta Sweet Tooth Scourge, love this card. And our rare is Hilda the Icy Crown, very awesome. Uh, just a regular treatment on that one, but still cool card. Oh boy, and then we get the Necropotence anime art. Look at that. Heck yeah. That's so cool looking. Necropotence is awesome. Um, and then we get a foil candy grapple and a wicked and cursed token. Let's sleeve up that. Necropotence. That's super cool. Put that in a hard sleeve. Very awesome. So far, we've nailed two uh, big deal 
black in, enchantments from the um, Enchanted Tales list. Necropotence is our best hit so far. Um, this The version of Bitter Blossom that we got is the lesser of the two. Uh, but the Necropotence is fantastic. All right, we got two packs left. Two packs left. Also, I love shout out to the Ashiok art. Let's let's go close. Ashiok's my favorite planeswalker, and this art is freaking great. Narset is like a cl very close second, and then Ren is probably my third. Oh, we got a gold signature splashy spellcasters. Nice. A full art forest. Look how gorgeous that is. My God. My God. We got a Hamlet glutton. Brave the wilds. Rowan's grim search. Eerie interference. Glass casket. The princess takes flight. Dutiful Griffin, and our rare is Malevolent Witch Kite. Big flyer. Ooh, Mosswood Dread Knight, my favorite card from the whole set, right here. I love this little two drop. This is my favorite card, printed in a long time. Uh, we got Raid Bombardment as our Enchanted Tail. Ooh, and a Foil Utopia Sprawl. That is sick. Gorgeous. And we got a food token. Look at that nasty food. Cool. Um, I don't think Utopia Sprawl is... Near the top. No, it's a dollar. Not bad, though. Uh, what I did want to look at was... Where the Hilda landed. I know Hilda's a very powerful card. Oh. Two bucks right now. The full art version or extended art version is eight and the foil extended is ten. So not bad, but not good that good either. Um with just these two um well um, with just these two picks, uh we've made our money back, so that's very good. Very good. And that doesn't count all the other stuff. Uh, let's jump in close. This is our last pack for our Wilds of Eldraine bundle. Let's take a look. Ooh. We got an anime version of Ariette as our art card. Maybe that's a good sign. Planes. We got a Red Tooth Genealogist. Bestial Bloodline. Hopeful Vigil. Hopeless Nightmare. Tempest Heart. Tempest Heart. Collector's Vault. This is only our second artifact. Uh, Frolicking Familiar. This guy's so cute. And our rare is Horn Locked Whale. Uh, in the fancy border treatment. Super good pull. The end is an extra good pull. Uh, this card is super powerful. This is going to be a absolute banger in standard for quite a while and beyond. This does the um, necro, not necropotence, necromentia thing, which is very good. We've got Compulsion as our Enchanted Tail and Foil Armory Mice. And another gross food token. So 
So that is it for our um, bundle packs. It's not bad. We definitely made our money back. Um, whether or not we got like a profit on it is yet to be seen, but very cool. We got this list card from Time Spiral. Let's just stack these. Actually, these go in the front. We didn't get any Ashioks, which I'm, I'm sort of bummed about, but. Let's see if we got any rares. We've got a Heart Flame Duelist. In blue, we have Horn Locked Whale. Horned Lock Whale. I keep pronouncing that wrong. Forced Fruition. Sleep Cursed Fairy and an Asinine Antics. Pretty decent. Uh, in black, we got The End. Great card. We got a Malevolent Witch Kite. We got Oversold Cemetery, Gumdrop Poisoner. We got a lot of good black cards. Obviously, Lich Knight's Conquest, which we're not going to put in the pulls list. And then we got Bitter Blossom and Necropotence up here. Red was really soft. We got like 10 red cards. Uh, I don't believe we got any rares. Oh yeah, Song of Taut and Tans. Decent. For all you rat players. Then in green, we got quite a bit of green. Uh, we got Mosswood Dread Knight. Not a lot of rares though. Defense of the Heart. Our two artifacts were both uncommons, and we got we got a, almost a play set of Evolving Wilds, which is nice. One of them is Foil. I like the new art on the Evolving Wilds. Um, and I believe we only got two of the new full art lands, right? We got a forest and a plains. And the planes. That's it. Bummer. I was hoping to get way more than that. Uh, I'm just gonna put these here. So that's pretty good for what is essentially eight packs. We got twice that many rares of mythics. Necropotence almost pays for the whole thing. Which is pretty good. We've also got Mosswood Dread Knight, which is my favorite card in the whole set. We also got The End, which is going to be the card you should go and buy four of right now because the price is going to skyrocket. I'm sure the price is already pretty high. Uh, Asinine Antics as well. That's a good card. Forced Fruition. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player draws seven cards. Dang. Horn, Horned Lock Whale and a Heart Flame Duelist. Pretty cool. I mean, we got some great hits. Some great cards. Very useful cards. Obviously, Necropotence and Bitter Blossom are the biggest ones. We're going to have to do three rows of four. No, we're going to have to do more than that. Three rows of five? 
Those two. Not bad at all. I. That was a lot of fun to open. I love opening set boosters. I know people prefer, most people prefer draft boosters just because that's kind of like the thing you play the most magic with. But I find set boosters are super fun to open. They've always got exciting things. Let's take a look at that. Paul, oh, that's real nice. Real, real nice. Um, yeah, I wish we got the better, the other version of Bitter Blossom. I think that would have been the real icing on the cake. As far as the normal cards go, so let's... um. Let's take out the Enchanted Tales. And the Listy. As far as the normal cards go from the set, um, it's pretty decent as well. We've got some really potent cards. Gumdrop Poisoner is a big card. Um, the Asinine Antics, the end, is probably the best normal card in this pull. Mosswood Dread Knights is my favorite card of the entire thing, so obviously I'm a little biased, but um, that's my favorite card of this whole set. Hilda of the Icy Crown is really great if you're playing um, the blue-white tap synergy deck. Otherwise, it's okay. Um, yeah, some good pulls. I think that most people are playing their limited decks with the Enchanted Tales, right? There's no weird rule in pre-release or anything where you can't play with those added cards. I know they've done that a few times recently, and it's kind of annoyed people. And then, as far as our... Field and Limited are able to use... Okay, perfect. Yeah, because I know that they've done it recently where you can't play with the extra cards. The pre-release kit for Lord of the Rings had... Um, had, like, one of the art mural cards, and you weren't allowed to use them in your pre-release thing, essentially. That's pretty cool. So these are great. Um, Oversold Cemetery. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have four or more creature cards in your graveyard, you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. That's really good. Um, and then these are obviously standard legal dependent. I don't think... Is there anything in this list that's standard legal? Um, is anything in Enchanted Tales legal in Standard? I guess it's hard because you can't like look at the original set symbols. You just have to know. I 
actually, maybe I can scribe all this. Maybe I can, if I search from set enchanted tail, but I also do legal in standard. Well, there's one unnatural growth is legal in standard. It is one green, 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 green. At the beginning of each combat, double the power and toughness of each creature you control until end of turn. Oh, right. That's from um, Midnight Hunt. I forgot about that. Anyway, so there's only one standard legal card from Enchanting Tales. Otherwise, everything else is kind of just for the commander players, for those looking for cards for your shelf, um, those that play more eternal formats, and then like collectors. Obviously, there's some cards in there worth quite a bit. When I was looking at the buy list, uh, if I turn foils on, the extended confetti foil version of Smothering Tithe and Ristic Study are both listed at $380 um, right now. So that might change, fluctuate a little bit. Doubling Season comes really close in third uh, with the confetti foil at $250. And then you've got normal foil ristic study normal or confetti foil omni omniscience and then normal foil doubling season um yeah those are the those are your top six and then confetti foil necropotence is seven normal foil smothering tithe is eighth greater oromancy in confetti foil is ninth and then grave pack packed in confetti foil is 10th so that's an interesting list um obviously some really powerful cards in there with like ristic study smothering tide doubling season these cards all fetch huge prices uh just in their standard variations i sold i cracked open a doubling season about uh, probably like a year ago or so on this channel and i immediately sold it for like 140 dollars now it's at 76 dollars which because of the reprints uh is obviously bringing the price down a bit so uh, i was fortunate there but these new enchanted tail versions are like 70 dollars for the weird anime goose thing i just sold my battle bond one for 60 nice that's cool now I can buy it back for less. True. The same card. Make sure you make sure you get the exact same one. I never thought about buying stuff back, I guess, but I also don't tend to sell things that are I'm gonna use. I used to have a cap on the cards I would play. Like I opened um a couple shieldreds uh from Dominaria. And those were really powerful cards, so I like kept them thinking uh, one day I'll sell these once they get up in price. And then now I'm just playing with them. I think playing like Pioneer and, and Modern really changed my mindset on like, I just need to take good care of them. I should play with them. They're, they're game pieces. Like, I'm not going to tear them in half or anything like that. I'm not going to be rough with them. I put everything in in deck boxes like i don't think i'm going to buy it back since it's probably too slow for my deck but now it's an op but it is an option well that's fair um but yeah so my mind has shifted a bit on like how powerful of cards i'm willing to, or how expensive of cards i'm willing to play with when i first started collecting it was like if it was over 20 dollars, i would not play with it now i have like a full play set of junji ito thought seizes in my pioneer deck and i just make sure that i'm taking good care of the deck and nothing bad happens to them 
Uh, I guess I should take the list card out. Yeah, you just got to be careful. That's all. Um, treat your cards nicely and make sure that they're sleeved. Change your sleeves often if you're a big... Um, never had that issue, but I can understand it. Yeah, for sure. I think it's like... I don't know. I grew up poor, so having an expensive hobby is is daunting. But you start to come to grips with it. And you have to kind of change that mindset. I changed the mindset of like, I want to make money so that I can buy more cards to like, I want to play the best decks because I started grinding tournaments and stuff like that. So having that mindset shift um, really helped me because I was just like cautious about playing with these cards. And now I just want to win games. So <laughs> I say, screw it. I'm still, I still immediately sell expensive cards that I'm never going to use. I don't play a lot of white or red. Um, but I sell those quite quickly for the most part. Best mindset. Win games. Yeah. That is the best mindset. Um, I guess I can't, if I can't put these enchanted tales in the. Wilds of Eldraine box, so I might as well take them out now. I'll just put them in a binder, I guess. I keep most of my like big heavy hitters for commander and stuff in binders so that I can build a deck easier. Otherwise, all of my um magic cards get sorted into these which are like I have an Alex unit drawer right next to my under my desk and each of these is like these are this is black this is each set that is currently in standard and then once it rotates out of standard I take it out of the drawer and I put it in a different box which kind of like sits in the closet but I keep the standard stuff right next to me. Um, cool. 